Hello, this is Professor Muddlehead, and today we are back with another Hytale video. So on this video, we're going to be looking at the latest Hytale blog, which is down here, and it's called Designing... whoops. It's called Designing Monsters for Hytale. So let's dive right in. Okay, so on this first screenshot, we have what looks to be, this looks like the Emerald Grove to me, so I'm presuming this is a Zone 1 warrior. I don't know if he's a warrior, skeleton. Zone 1 skeleton. And he is an archer, because he's got the bow, and then the quiver with the arrows in. He's not really got any armour. He's got some little boots, and a um, tunic and a cap thing. But nothing that looks like proper armour. I don't know if this is going to be some kind of ruin, just because this looks like a full block. This is a sideways slab, and then I think this is a stair or another slab. I can't, I'm not quite sure. Anyway, also this looks very Minecrafty, like very pixelated. So I don't know why that's that pixelated. Like the pixels are so big, if you know what I mean. Anyway. So it says that there are going to be including archers, mages, or wizards, and warriors. So we can see we can see them right here. But it says that they're the basic they're the basic brick that can become anything we want because they're based on the human rig. It's very easy to make it modular. So I presume what that means is that these guys right here are the same um, maybe hitbox and shape as the humans. They just look a lot different. I don't know. So you can see we've got this zone 1 archer again. And then if we go down here to the zone 2 sand warrior, then he's got he's got a sword. Whoops. And he's got, I don't know what this is, but he does, so he doesn't have much armour, but it looks better than this guy's at least. Then the zone 3 frozen warrior, he has a shorter, thicker blade. He's got some strong boots, strong gloves, and a chest plate piece. No helmet, but he has spikes of ice coming out of his head, and a beard of ice, obviously. Then we've got the zone 4 soldier which is a soldier, not a warrior, um, has a big helmet. He's kind of fully decked out in all the armour with a sword. He looks fairly strong because he's from Zone 4, I presume. And then we have this Zone 1 wizard. So the wizards have beards, and I don't know if they're going to be very strong. I don't know if they can cast spells, but because this is a staff i presume so and if you see this is kind of like the shape of the other screenshot we saw the screenshot of the symbol for the evil which is basically a diamond so anywhere that you see diamond it probably means here we go that varan this is varan stuff spawn not spawn whatever and then so it says Skeletons are a standard enemy type, but their appearance and threat level, which kind of um, goes along with these guys having different levels of armour, cha changes as you progress through adventure mode. Undead encountered in later zones are tougher, wielding weapons and armour that reflect both their environment and the increased danger that they pose. So, I presume that means, like I was speculating here, that as the zones go up into zones 5, 6 and, and the other worlds, then the skeleton warriors will still see them, but they'll just look a lot different and be a lot tougher. Okay, next screenshot. So this screenshot is a sand warrior or desert warrior from zone 2. So we'll focus on this guy. This just looks like a headband. It doesn't look like any kind of proper armour. But he does have a mace, which is interesting, because in this screenshot up here, you can see he has a sword. So that's quite interesting. Um, 
He does seem to have a chest plate though, which will probably make it um probably a bit harder to defeat. I don't know how the maces are gonna work. And this scenery is amazing by the way. I mean look at this tree, it's like really thick. Like there's um Baobab? Is that what something called? Probably just butchered that name. So they say it's very easy to change skins and armour. So I presume that means that they could take this piece of armour, chest plate right here, change the colouring a bit, and it would become a different element. Um not element, whatever. Um what's it called? Um metal or that thing. So these we haven't heard pretty much we've heard pretty much nothing about them. But we know they're called crawlers. Now the only it's annoying because we always get a front on shot like this, so I don't know if their body literally just ends here or if there's any more of it. But they look they look pretty tough. So as you can see we have this it looks like an underground ravine to me in the Emerald Grove. And you can see we have these crawlers hanging around ready to pounce. Do they say anything about the crawlers? Waiting to leap at unexpected adventurers. What? The creatures of the void make up the armies of Varen. So that imposes that Varen is trying to take over the world in some way. And he's gathering armies to do it and you've got to stop him. So... So these demonic monsters, the crawlers, pose a lethal threat. Their design tells a story offering clues to their origin and in indicating that they each represent part of a greater threat. Probably Varen. So the challenge was to give them... I'm really bad with this thing. Similarities in terms of shapes and colours. To hint to the player that it's the same family of creatures, the same faction, but they're not like Minecraft zombies which look all exactly the same. Okay, so now we have a video. And this is a video of a void eye. So you can see we have the main body of it with these tentacles down here. Then it's got two tentacles to the side with another eye. So it says down here that the void creatures have a number of common features. Pale flesh with purple accents, glowing green eyes and curving horns. These curving horns are used in various places to symbolise Varen. Thomas says, the creatures are also R related in terms of shape, even if they're different. Look out for the diamond shapes, they're another key indicator of the presence of Varen and his minions. So, that pretty much means if you look at this, th these eyes right here, you can see that they are a diamond shape, and this is a diamond shape, and these. So th that indicates that Varen is present, because that's the symbol for the evil. And then we have what is called a void spawn. So this is, I guess you could say, a child of Varen. They call them void spawn. And they look to be like, I don't know if they're bosses, but they're definitely very tough. So you can see we've got massive, this looks like thorium, the greener element. A big thorium sword. Um the same green eyes and the diamond shape you can see that we've got another diamond here and on the armor so there's there's diamonds everywhere and i really like these um spiked fists i should probably nah. so it says the most dangerous monsters have an appropriately threatening appearance that's that's good Particularly the Voidspawn. They're some of Varen's most dangerous soldiers. Okay, so that kind of implies that they're not a boss, but they're they're more like the Yeti. They're a very big, powerful, normal creature. But it also says that 
Even so, it's important that all of Hytale's creatures cohere as part of the game's overall art style. Whether you're facing down a void spawn or befriend befriending a Quebec, it should be clear that they are both part of the same universe. So, in that um, paragraph or two right there, they're saying that they want the creatures to have some similarities, so you can see that they all come from the same universe, but not making them completely different. Which I like, that's, that's good. This is achieved by ins ensuring that all creature designs are based on common elements. If you're planning to design your own Hytale creatures one day, then, then it may be worth keeping these in mind. So, I guess the common elements are the way that all the creatures are built. They're kind of built with these rectangular blocks, I guess. But they're kind of put together in different ways. And then it says, texturing plays a big role, as it does the colour palette you use how you draw shadows, where you place lights, and what hues you're using. So, for all those people who are going to be modding and making their own creatures in Hytale, that is a big help. So, you might you might start out designing this big sword, and you might do it all one shade of green. But that's not going to look very good. And then, you can go and you can colour each individual pic pixel, or kind of change it up a bit, just so it looks just to give it more variety or even like the, this even like this toe this claw this claw right here has about I don't know three different colors and that's a tiny tiny area anyway moving on so this is a truck warrior I think no hunter I'm pretty sure that's a chalk hunter. The chalks are pretty much the only thing I'm not very strong on. Um, anyway, so you can see he's got this massive double-bladed axe, and he's guarding the fire. I presume. I th I have read the blog. So guarding the fire, I presume, means that the chalks need this fire to maybe keep away something bigger and stronger, or just because they need the warmth, or like the warmth. They're kind of, they've either made this, or they've found a kind of shelter with some logs, just to make a kind of, sort of, um, defence kind of thing. A barrier. Yeah, Chalk Warrior guards the campfire. Chalks are an example of the tonal middle ground, there's a sense of fun in their design, as you can see from the... It's kind of smiling and the, the nose is cute. So then the name Chalk actually started as a joke. So he didn't want to do an orc or a troll, so he made a Chalk. Except that this C here would be a K. So they kind of just took the, the T and the R and put them on to, yeah, so we've got orc with a k, not c, and then tr, which is, which is cool, you kind of create a hybrid, or have being said, some players aren't going to get their biggest scare when they wander into a troll campsite, no, not me, or even when they run in with Varen's forces, now, before I saw this, this kind of got me a bit worried, Um, I was like, what could be worse than Varen Spawn? This. This could be worse than Varen Spawn, definitely. Look, there's three of these massive spiders. And they're not, and they have these massive fangs, and they actually have teeth. Like, that's going to be really scary. For some people, if you're facing that off. And look, um, I think it was in the Little Wood, it called these eggs but they're not eggs. You did correct that mistake later, but yes, these are not eggs, because um, that's definitely silk. These are people that they've wrapped up and hung from the ceiling, and there's another one over there. So, I think, yeah, I think that'll be it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you next time. 
Bye.